Hare Krishna. How to speak effectively? Let's discuss this in terms of four things we seek to achieve through speaking. Two do's and two don'ts. This will be based on four guidelines for effective speaking given in the Bhagavad Gita 1715. Anudvega karam vakyam satyam priya hitam chayat swadhyaya abhyasanam chayva vanmayam tapa uchyate So, speak non-agitatingly anudvega karam vakyam satyam speak truthfully priyam speak in a pleasing way and hitam speak beneficially. So, let's look at these. So, our first purpose when we speak should be to open people's eyes. That means, rather than telling them what they should do, don't do this and do this, we can focus on helping them to see things differently, not on instructing them to do things differently. If their vision broadens by our communication with them, then they may themselves be able to see, for example, the consequences of their choices. And being thus equipped with a more informed vision, they will naturally make, they're more likely to make better choices. So this is how we can apply the Bhagavad Gita's instruction to speak truthfully. Speak truthfully in a way that helps people see the true consequences of their actions, not just force them to make the choices that we see as right, but they may not. And second purpose is open people's hearts. Quite often, everybody is defensive and protective. Their, their hearts are closed. So if we are communicating something which requires them to make some changes, then we need to convince them that we are their well-wishers. So the Bhagavad Gita urges us to speak beneficially, hitam. This doesn't just mean that we speak politely, courteously, respectfully. Yes, of course, it means that. But it also means that we actually keep in our heart their best interests and let that benevolent intention animate our speech. Then two things we should avoid doing is don't shut people's mouths. That means... Now, sometimes people do have misconceptions and they may justify their misconceptions. And to help them rise to a better understanding, we may need to counter those misconceptions. Still, how we counter them is important. If we, if we do it in a way that mocks their arguments and insults their intelligence, then we may silence them, but we won't convince them. Mm -hmm. they will end up alienated. We, will, we may have won the battle of winning the argument at that point, but we have, lo we have lost the war of actually encouraging them to transform. Be courteous. Be, uh, have a pleasing disposition, not a domineering disposition. And lastly, we don't want to shut people's minds. Now, how it might we shut their minds? If we speak arguments based on authorities that they just don't accept, so they find the authorities unacceptable, then they will find even our points unacceptable. And then our arguments will have no effect. That's why at least initially we need to base our arguments on points that on grounds that are mutually acceptable as if, for example logic or shared human values that's what the Bhagavad Gita implies when it says speak non-agitatingly speak in a way that is intelligible for people within their existing framework of thought so thus when we do these four things speak to open people's eyes and hearts and to not shut their mouths and minds, then we can make our speech more effective. Thank you. Hare Krishna.